Okay, let me wipe off the old knife. Now then, take our little filbert brush and we can just begin filling this in. Just begin filling it in, something like so. There. And here it comes this way. And this is just a very simple little boat. Maybe, maybe the guy parked it here when he ran up on the beach somewhere. Who knows? Here on the Bob Ross Podcast, we spend a lot of time at the beach. And hey, I ain't complaining. Sunshine. There. Put some arms on him. And these arms just stretch right out here to get the light all they can. They want to come out and play in the sunshine. There. See there? Sandcastles. Good place to take your shoes off and just let your feet run naked through there. That's fun. Tidal waves. It's really a big wave. It's just piling up, getting ready to crash on some rocks. Wait, tidal waves? Oh no. the beach. Anyway, are, are we still rolling? Oh, cut it for a second, will ya? Yeah, the guy at Radio Shack said this podcast was waterproof. Guess he wasn't kidding. Test one, two. We good? Here on the beach, the joy is thick, and one can understand why. I was born in Daytona Beach, Florida, so I sort of grew up around the water. So when you grew up around it, there. Okay. I still spend quite a bit of time over by the, over by the beach. I like the water. It's where Bob Ross spent a lot of his formative years, hanging in nature. And in nature, you see little trees like this all over. And hanging with gators. I had an alligator that lived with me, let's put it that way. And I fed him every day. And every day he bit me. <laughs> One thing about alligators, I don't think you can ever make a pet out of them. I finally turned him loose, and he still wanted to bite me. But one of the most almighty things Bob Ross ever did in Florida was hang up his hat in New Smyrna Beach, in a spot tucked away near a happy little strip mall that's become a mecca for some, an epicenter of Bob's teaching legacy. A legacy that continues to grow with some happy little help. So I'm Nick Hankins, and I'm a certified Bob Ross instructor, manager of the Bob Ross Art Workshop and Gallery, and teacher trainer, all-purpose art flunky, I guess. Is that all? (laughs) All All-purpose art flunky Nick Hankins has spent a lot of time on the beach these past few years, too, along with his wife Ada, his son Alex, and their dog Pip. Nick's decades-long pursued interest in oil painting, and in Bob Ross, is the reason both he and I have washed ashore here at... Oh, did I forget to mention where we are? Now then, let's go right up in here, and maybe there's a happy little bump. Big rock, big stone, and he lives right there. 30 years ago, Bob Ross, the one-time traveling TV painter, the man in the motorhome, had planted his flag and opened up an art workshop and gallery. Inside, two rows of almighty plastic-covered tables run along both sides of the room. Chairs poised to support the warm bums of the planet's present and future certified Ross instructors beside them. And above the furniture, Bob Ross landscapes, wall to wall, for as far as the eye can see. Well, as far as where the wall ends. And the gallery's open most of the time and just just stop in and say hello. Some Annette Kowalski floral paintings stand out amongst all Bob's happy trees and almighty mountains. We need Annette here to paint florals. My partner, Annette's one of the best floral painters in the country. I'm going to get her on here one day. We'll have her just do some flowers. Yep, it took us 22 episodes, but we are here. We finally reached the The workshop. The story goes, as I understand it, Bob and Walt and Annette had adjoining condos back here on Saxon Drive. Just a short distance from here, Annette came over to get some barbecue supplies from Publix and saw that this space was for rent. Just sort of make a decision where you think a big old tree would live here. 
and drop it in. That's all there is to it. She thought, wouldn't it be great to have, especially for snowbirds and retirees, a place that they could come in, see Bob's paintings, take painting classes, give the husband something to do while the wives are shopping, that sort of thing. And it's what happens at these tables that are just as important to Bob's legacy as the paintings proudly displayed above them. So 21 weeks out of the year, we're doing teacher training or kind of in-depth seminars where people are going to come for a week and paint five paintings in a row. In between that, we try to do just uh, one-day hobby classes of about four hours in length so people that have never picked up a paintbrush can come in and try it and see what they think, and hopefully we get them, we get them hooked on it. Because you get hooked on this. It's addicting, and we don't make any bones about it. It's so much fun that you will get addicted to it if you're like most of us. Nick Hankins got hooked years ago in Greenville, Tennessee. Some of my favorite memories, Ron, are being 12, 13 years old, sitting in a painting class with a certified instructor on a Saturday. It was just like the most, the most calm, comfortable I've ever felt in my life. Like, I belong here. Now then, let's begin bringing some grassy areas down into the path. That'll help set the path down into the painting, make it look like it belongs there. This is the intangible thing that I can't describe, but I want it so bad just to be a part of this, just to be involved with this somehow. And (laughs) it sounds like a cop-out when I say I can't describe it. It's intangible, but it's a little true north I can go back to is the emotions that I remembered when I first got involved with painting and I first started watching Bob and taking it seriously and studying it. And not many people come down this path the bushes and the grasses about about to reclaim it enjoying him not just the painting but bob and understanding that because of bob this was something entirely different this is why i'm interested in art not i mean yeah who doesn't love to draw or paint or whatever but this is what makes it exciting this is what makes it fresh this is what adds that other element that you know nobody else had big old tree there he is we're just using the fan brush Maybe he's got a friend right there, wherever you want him. It's up to you. Could be another little one hiding in there. The old clock at the workshop tells me we've got another finished podcast episode. I want to thank... It's not finished? I thought you wanted me to come visit Nick and Ada at the workshop. There's more? Look up. Wilderness Way 31-13. Yeah, I know what it is. Series 31, episode 13. The last Bob Ross landscape featured on The Joy of Painting. It's not the last Bob Ross landscape featured on The Joy of Painting. There's a series 32. Go where? Go to college. Dude, I already been to college. You're watching DBCC Public Broadcasting, Channel 15. Your home for public television. Celebrating 20 years in Central Florida. Daytona State College's public TV station, WDSC, serves over 3 million people in the 17th largest market in the U.S. And it's been airing the joy of painting for decades. I get letters every day from people all over the country that have never tried painting before. And they've seen us on TV and they've tried this and it works and they're so excited. Inside a warehouse sized production studio, Nick and Ada Hankins are discussing strategy, specifically what shirt Nick is going to wear. Because this will just, just for. Because it, and, it, and it will match up with the episode. I mean, right. it'll just. No, I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it would. Sure. Okay, I'll hush. Okay. I'm going to come with I'll get back to doing what I do best, squeezing paint out of tubes. And of course, just as the Bob Ross podcast host arrives, he's forced to pipe down. All right, let me, uh, I got to remember to be quiet. Yeah, we're, <laughs> That's the thing. We're here. I just hope I don't sneeze, or even worse. Just gone to the bathroom. Well, I guess we're stuck here. Nick went with a blue shirt, by the way. Look sharp. All right, guys, we're rocking and rolling in here. And... You're ready to go. So here we go in five, four, three. Hi, welcome back. I'm Nicholas Hankins, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the final episode of the 32nd Joy of Painting series. I hope you've enjoyed some of the previous shows, and I hope you're ready to paint a little. Nick isn't just painting an old classic. Shades of Grey, Northern Lights, or Ebony Sea. Here's the twist. You know what? I'll let Nick tell it. Series 32, Bob developed about eight canvases 
or nine canvases, and then out of that there were about seven paintings, because a couple of them are very close to being repeats. He was kind of working out compositional ideas, I believe. Sadly, Bob didn't stick around long enough to paint these new compositions for us on public television, but for the past three decades those paintings have stuck around. Closely guarded, never unveiled to the public at large. They were presented to an exclusive audience during the uh, memorial night. There was always an, a, just a lovely tribute to Bob from Annette and a lot of the people who were involved in this since the beginning. Putting those paintings on display at CRI reunions and memorials likely offers comfort for the folks that knew and loved Bob. But for Nick, it feels different. And when the company starts kicking around the idea of more television, he and his wife already have a big idea of their own. That's when Ada and I began to talk about, we need to do the Series 32. I think it was Ada's suggestion, and I thought it was great, because as I told Ada, the first time I saw those paintings at a reunion, it was it was during, like I say, just a very moving tribute to Bob, and they would have the easel that he used on the show there set up at the front of the room with all of the Series 32 paintings surrounding it, and it was kind of velvet roped off. And the first time I walked up to see those, it was the same feeling I felt when I would go to a funeral and you'd get up near the casket. Bob Ross is Nick's hero. It's hard for him to lay eyes on these paintings and not feel the loss. Tough not to associate the fact that Bob isn't physically here to show us what he'd done. But as I've said before, the joy of Bob Ross isn't exclusive. And you can't contain it. It's for everyone. And so by finishing what Bob started for Series 32, Nick Hankins has taken a pursued interest in flipping the script and transforming sadness into gladness. I want that icky, sad feeling gone from 32. I want them to be a joyful thing. And that's what Bob always pushed so hard was just joy, happiness. Can't have light without dark. You know, it's just like, it's just like in life. You, you can't know happiness unless you've known a little bit of sorrow. So, good Lord gives us all a little bit of sorrow so we, so we can know the happiness when it comes. Tree trunks, little burn umber. Doop, 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 doop. There we are. We need to make these a happy thing again. We need to make these a thing that people are gonna watch and learn and grow and celebrate. You know, painting, painting should be fun. It should be something that makes you just enjoy life. Inside WDSC Studios, Nick paints 13 paintings for Series 32. His favorite is called Woodland Peace. And I've mixed in a little phthalo blue and phthalo green, and finally in the corners a little black. So now that you know what's going on, Bob was always apt to say in, in every series that he, that he filmed, we always needed a crazy painting, and I guess, I guess today, is the crazy painting, so if we pick up a little titanium white. Woodland piece hangs proudly on the easel at the workshop. It's amazing. It glows. You gotta see it for yourself. Nick feels like Bob was making a statement that joy always comes first. Even while enduring sad times, the happy painter was still letting in some light, still illuminating himself through his work. They're just gorgeous paintings, and especially that one just seems as bright and hopeful and calm as any painting he's ever painted. Lots of little stars up in the night sky. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Painting is so great because your imagination on a piece of canvas can become reality. Can become reality. And sometimes we all need to escape from reality. And this is the place to do it. Here, everything's peaceful and quiet. There's no bad things here. These are happy places here. While Nick gets ready to paint Series 32 in front of the cameras, Channel 15 is busy getting ready for Nick. The public television station in little Bobby Ross's backyard seems a natural fit for a new round of the joy of painting. It airs every weekday at 1 p.m. on our station. We've never changed the time slot. That's General Manager Robert Herklotz. When the Bob Ross Company contacted him about filming a new pilot with Nick at Daytona State College, Robert was intrigued. 
Robert sees an opportunity to spread more Bob Ross-inspired joy. There's so much positivity that comes from his program. I don't see that ever going away. I think that's why he's become such a popular figure in popular culture. And with Nick continuing this legacy, you know, it's going to appeal to a whole new audience as well. And so a crew is quickly put together to get the joy pumping. I couldn't have had a better team. And, you know, lo and behold, I just walked in and there they were, all of them. I used to watch it a lot, you know, growing up as a kid and even as an adult, you know, you're flicking channel surfing and you come across it and you're like, I'm stuck here now. I can't finish. He's not done. Derek Sanford is directing the new series. You can't leave until he, he signs his name, you know. Let's take a little bit of red and let's sign this little painting. Derek works alongside Mike Ranelli, Series 32's production manager. I grew up in Reno, Nevada. We didn't have a public television station until I was in college. I worked for the college and went to work right for the public TV station while I was in college. And of course, Bob Ross was one of the staple shows that we had on back when it started in the 80s. I have a television monitor that's right off camera so I can see exactly what you're seeing. And then we have some of the most fantastic camera people in the business here. I really love capturing things and sharing things with people. Deanna Coleman, one of Series 32's two camera operators. They'll look at what I'm looking at and between us, we'll turn everything so you can see it the best and get the best results at home. There we go. Bob Ross is somebody who just brings peace. He's been around since, you know, I can remember. You got the mints. I do. I have Bob Ross mints. <laughs> I've got my Bob Ross Did you just smuggle those in here because you no, knew we were doing this? No, absolutely not. I've only got one left. And I think you will find that's very refreshing. Bob Ross, when you sit and watch an episode of Bob Ross, it just makes you feel like everything is okay. Just sort of let your imagination go crazy. Just think like a cloud. Just float around the sky. Have a good time. That's all. Have you done any of the Bob Ross paintings I at all? I have. I went to the New Smyrna studio and I painted my favorite painting that they have in the retinue, which is the moonlit beach scene. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, the experience was awesome. Look at that. See there? Maybe there's a happy little cloud that just sort of floats across there. You can just pick up a little of the color and bring it right across. It's like such a charged, happy atmosphere. We've had the opportunity to meet people, as I say, from basically every walk of life. And they were all so excited to be there. And it was cool watching them make these paintings. And some of them that I talked to, it was their first time there. And they got to walk out of that place with a finished Bob Ross style painting that they made and they were just so happy and proud of themselves walking out of there and I felt so good and then I turned around and I sold the painting and paid for my class so that was great too <laughs> you made a happy buck I did that's what's so great about it you can just put them in your pocket at Daytona State College the crew is set the lights are lit the canvas is primed. The only question that remains is, did Nick Hankins do his homework? While they're doing that, let me show you what I've done up here. I would stand at the easel, put Bob's painting over here, hit the timer, see how close I could get, and how much I could make it look exactly like Bob's, because I wanted it to stay very true to form, figure out the colors, figure out the combinations, figure out which brush strokes, how he held the brush, all that stuff. I was just taking my experiences from watching him practically all my life and painting along with him practically all my life, and then distilling you know, as best I could just from a look at them, what he had done. There are millions of painters out there, but there's only one Bob Ross. And there's only one Nick Hankins the humble wizard of the workshop, seemingly the perfect person to carry Bob Ross's public TV torch into a new era. Listen, I'm just a podcast host. Don't take it from me. Take it from the folks who've already gotten to watch what the rest of us are about to. He's got whatever kind of the magic special flavor, magic secret sauce, he has the proper intonation, he knows how to tell the stories, he knows how to paint in the style, but at the same time, he's always giving little nods back to 
well, Bob said this and Bob did this. So it's not like he's copying or taking over for Bob. He always acknowledges that, that this is Bob's legacy. You know, we were all telling him, you, you hit it. I mean, on the nail head, it's lightning in a bottle what he's doing. I personally couldn't wait to start shooting with him and see how good he was compared to Bob. And honestly, when we were watching it, I was like, this is, well, this is Bob Ross, but it's not him. Gotta have that dart to show the light. How true is that in painting and in life? Gotta have a dart to show the light. We're just as amazed as the audience, you know, when he runs that brush over and makes a few dabs and all of a sudden, wow, there's a tree. Now, oh, wow, look, he made a rock. And there's a bush, geez, you know. So everybody working on the crew is enjoying it just as people at home would. It's in that nature, it's in that spirit of Bob Ross, but there's Nick in there too. Bring it over and then straight down. Over, straight down. Just let it, just let it fall. And in my experience, it works a little better if you make that noise. Don't ask me why, <laughs> it just does. It just does. Now I'll take my big two inch brush and we'll kind of soften it. He came here, from the he did his thing, he knew exactly what to do. And it was like he, we'd been doing this for multiple seasons. She was like a seasoned veteran already. In 26 minutes, the man can stand in front of a canvas, create a painting while he's talking the whole time. He just flows and he knows exactly where he's going, what layers come next, and exactly when to stop. You know, I know when I'm painting, I'm like, oh, God, none of that, none of that. There's just no hesitation. It's amazing watching him, it really is. Nick Hankins tries not to spend too much time thinking about why he is where he is or why he's so good at what he does. He and Ada just roll with it eagerly. We just stay busy, but I mean, personally to me, I'm just, you know, that's a dream come true. <laughs> it's just been a thing I've... I've wanted to be a part of for 30 years, and to be a part of it is it's a, an honor and a blessing. And Nick can be humble, sure, but he also recognizes that he's built for the moment. Having performed the stressful tasks, met all the deadlines, put in the time to learn and practice. The example I go to first was when we first moved down in 2019, there was a, a cookbook. There's a Bob Ross cookbook. And they wanted, oh, golly, like 25 paintings, 25 12 by 16 paintings of these dishes that were going to be in the cookbook. And I'd never, I'd never painted food on purpose anyway. Um, accidentally? Accidentally. I Maybe accidentally painted a, a banana. A times when I, <laughs> it's Marcel Duchamp. It just happened. I don't know. Painting food for a Bob Ross cookbook kept Nick up working most nights till 2 a.m. for over a month. And probably made him pretty hungry. Man, it was exhausting, but I could take that experience of having to like build something pretty much from scratch, and I could take that to the studio in the morning thinking, hey, if I can do that, we can do this. And you can do this. There's no big secret to it. We give you all the secrets right here on the show. All you need is the desire, a little imagination, and some practice. But painting is one thing. Personality is another. Bob Ross had it in bushels. There's no formal script for what Bob and Nick do. There's a plan, sure, but how that plan is laid out and relayed to the audience, it's like jazz or stand-up comedy. The magic comes not just from knowing what to play or say, but how to play it and say it. Yeah, I painted a, a waterfall scene yesterday from Oregon, and I used to go teach a lot of classes in Oregon at, at this pretty state park that I painted, and I just loved it. Oregon is probably one of my favorite states. It reminds me a great deal of my home in Alaska. I have the beautiful mountains and some of the fantastic scenery. And I love being able to hike a little bit while I was out there and talk about that and talk about the, you know, what it smelled like when you're around a big waterfall with a lot of evergreens. It's a state park in Oregon. There's just a tremendous number of waterfalls. I think you can do like a little 10 mile hike or something like that and see seven or eight waterfalls. It was beautiful. I had the good fortune to go out there and teach some painting classes. There's a moment that stands out when I watch Nick film the last of 13 new episodes of Series 32 in the studio at Daytona State College, right at the very beginning. It's the thing Nick once told me that first got him hooked on Bob Ross. Clean the old brush up. 
give it a good shake and just <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. I get the biggest kick out of that. Except when it's time for Nick to do it, Nick doesn't say those magic words. Clean out our brush and some good old odorless thinner. Shake out the excess. Give it a little wrap on the easel leg and we're all ready to go again. It almost seemed like because I know that you have this reverie for Bob, mm -hmm. I almost felt like that was like almost paying tribute to him in this small way is like, Bob is not here physically, but Bob is here. And I'm not going to try to be Bob. I'm Nick. Yep. And I'm doing it the Nick way, but I'm also paying tribute to Bob by not carbon copying what Bob did. Can I just thank you for noticing that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, sure. That's, I'm only here for the compliments. <laughs> that's, that's so <laughs> insightful, and you nailed it. I mean, you nailed it. Bob's not kidding. That really is the fun part. <laughs> that is so much fun. Now, with a clean, dry brush, I'm going to begin in the light area. How do you replace a legend? You don't. You can't. For Nick Hankins, Series 32 is an opportunity to spread joy in a unique way to turn sadness into gladness. And that's more than sufficient. And who knows, 30 years from now, some podcasting whiz kid on Mars might be talking to folks about Nick the way everyone seems to talk about Bob today. As we found out, the people who follow Bob Ross are very particular. They'll be the ones to judge whether or not you've got it right. We've actually talked about this among the staff here, and we think it would be a lot of fun to actually take one of Nick's classes at the together uh, at as the group. Yeah, it would be yeah. a fun team building exercise. But for me, I just I want to see if I could do it. And then you got to film it and air it <laughs> on the station. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun, right? Flip the cameras I don't around. Know if I want to embarrass myself, <laughs> sure you do. For the ratings, <laughs> this is true. I go home and my husband's so happy when I work this show because I go home a happy little camera person. <laughs> I have no complaints about my day. I mean, I'm just on cloud nine. Nick Hankins, self-proclaimed all-purpose art flunky, is a torchbearer too, carrying the fire that Bob Ross gave him as a boy, a fire and a drive that Bob still gives him, and pushing it out to light up the world. I try to go back, I try to find those emotions and those feelings because I want to give them to somebody else. Because I want the next 12, 13 year old kid to have their life changed so much for the better because they watched me or Bob or whatever and you know, got obsessed with this and it turned out to be a great obsession. First step in being able to do anything is believe that you can do it because you can do it. Believe that you can do it, see it in your mind. See it finished before you ever start. Think about what you're going to do. And as I, I'm sort of a fanatic, but I believe that you can accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. But you start out by believing here that it's already happened. You see what it's going to look like when it's done. You build a little dream in your mind and you can do that. The old clock at the workshop tells me we've got another finished podcast episode. I want to thank my guests, Deanna Coleman, Robert Herklotz, Mike Ranelli, Derek Sanford, and Nick Hankins. This happy little episode was produced with help from James Shapiro at Janssen Media and mixed by digital sound and video of Daytona Beach, Florida. You can support your local public television station. Say thanks for giving us Bob Ross and the joy of painting. We want to see your paintings. Use hashtag paint like Bob Ross. Bob Ross Certified Instructors, they're the only ones that know how to teach you Bob's world-famous painting method. Don't settle for second best. Find a local CRI at BobRoss.com and then click Take a Class. And if you got your own Bob Ross story to tell, we want to hear about it, leave us a message at 866-FANBRUSH. Or you can email us at podcast at BobRoss.com. And follow us on Instagram at BobRoss underscore the joy of painting. I'm Ron Scalzo. The Joy of Bob Ross is written and produced by me, Ron Scalzo, in partnership with Bob Ross, Inc. Bob Ross name and images are registered trademarks of Bob Ross, Inc.